Video games send us on many different quests throughout vast virtual worlds. Some are manageable and others seem insurmountable. But if we work hard enough, we can get there. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks, 10 near impossible quests in video games. Starting off at number seven, it's Return to Your Roots and No Stone Unturned from Skyrim. Collection quests are the worst. You know exactly what we're talking about here too. Missions where you have to do something really basic like collect five random things, then return and you get some weak reward for it. They're usually tedious at best and at worst they're absolutely infuriating. Out of all the quests in Skyrim though, the these two, they're the worst collectible quests by far. No matter what difficulty you are playing on, these things are going to give you trouble. A return to your roots pops up when you collect a crimson Nern root, when you go to Blackreach and read Sinderton's field journal, which is found around the Blackreach ruin. This is kind of a callback to the Seeking Your Roots quest from Oblivion, except it's somehow so much, so much more annoying. Your goal is simple. You collect 30 crimson Nern root in Blackreach. Remember, Blackreach is a big underground cave city which is dark, empty, and there's a lot of ground to cover. Uh, at least with the Oblivion quest that I mentioned, you could collect Nern Root where you were doing other things, but here you were forced to tediously explore around this giant area until you get enough. And that one is bad, but this other quest, No Stone Unturned, is an even worse collection quest. If you find one of these Stones of Berenzia, the quest will start. Once again, simple goal, you find 24 of these stones. The problem is, they can be anywhere in Skyrim and they are completely unmarked. That means you've got two options, either carefully scour every inch of every city, dungeon, random location that you can find in this massive game or look up a guide. And even with a guide, these things are a total pain to find. And the reward is a permanent ability that increases your chances of finding gems and it's, it's not worth the effort. These two missions are incredibly annoying, but the next one on the list is even worse. At number six is Flying Rat from Grand Theft Auto 4. Uh, and this is this is just maybe one of the worst collectible type missions in gaming history. When we brought this one up, I was just like, no, what an awful thing. Why'd they do that? So if you want to complete this thing, you have to hunt down and kill 200 pigeons hiding all around Liberty City. It's 200 small birds that can be pretty much anywhere. If you're a Grand Theft Auto completionist, this thing is absolute hell. They are often hidden in truly obscure and difficult to find spots, and the simple act of spotting them can sometimes be incredible difficult considering how muddy this game look it's not the worst looking game you've ever seen in your life but wow it is not a colorful game either to make things even more annoying firing your gun even in totally abandoned areas will often set off the police making it so you have to deal with them chasing you around as well as finding these dumb birds and for all your trouble what do you get well it sounds awesome an annihilator helicopter but well there's a couple things about it for some reason it often doesn't spawn if you take the window cleaning platform up to get it, making it so you need to take a helicopter to get your helicopter. Kind of defeats the purpose a little bit, doesn't it? I don't know about you, but if I had to drive to my garage, I would think, well, maybe I don't need this garage. It is an annihilator helicopter, so obviously it's not the same as every helicopter you're finding, but still. Also, the annihilator spawns in a few other places in the world already, and they're all easier to reach. So the reward you get for doing this incredibly tedious task is basically completely useless. Every single Grand Theft Auto game has some kind of annoying collection mission that is not worth doing, but the flying rat quest in Grand Theft Auto 4, probably the worst in terms of this entire series. At number five is Jump Rope Genius and Hero of the Beach from Super Mario Odyssey. Now, this is usually a pretty chill game. You just wander around the levels, do whatever you want, but there are two little mini games you can play that are notoriously brutal. Sure, there are harder parts of the game, like the darker side of the moon level, but these two challenges are a lot closer to being side quests rather than levels, so they feel more appropriate for this list. The first, Jump Rope Genius from New Donk City, wants you to make a hundred jumps in this jump 
jump rope games, which seems pretty easy at first, but it ramps up pretty quick in difficulty. By a certain point, uh, the worst part is just going through the slow easy parts in order to redo the harder sections, because it gets to this area where it requires absolute jumping precision, and you have to make just the perfect tap on the jump button if you want to make it, and you've got to do it a lot, but it also comes out to this really slow paced part, which sucks so badly to get past, you just want to get to the next part, do the hard thing, and get through it. The other one, Hero of the Beach, which can be found in the Seaside Kingdom, is pretty much the same as the Jump Rope Challenge, just swap in volleyball instead. Now what makes this so hard is how random it can be. You never really know where the volleyball is going to go, and if you're in the wrong spot, then it can be almost impossible to reach the ball before it hits the ground. Everyone has different tips on how to get through this one, because it's brought some level of trauma to all people that have gone through it. It's just that difficult. Many suggest playing the game in two-player mode so you can control Cappy instead of Mario. Others suggest that you run in circles so Mario is always at full speed. And these tips can help, but there's no easy way to finish this one. It's just a huge pain that's going to take you so many tries, and there's just no way around it. Also, let's just be completely clear. You are not a hero of the beach for completing this. You are simply stuck in a time loop, which you eventually escape rather than becoming some form of hero. At number four is the tournament in Assassin's Creed Unity. Now, the Assassin's Creed games aren't usually all that hard. They can be pretty challenging, but there's some really tedious quests like getting all the feathers in Assassin's Creed 2. But for our money, this side quest called The Tournament might be the hardest in the entire franchise. The setup is simple. You want to assassinate some guy, like usual, and they're holding a tournament you're going to infiltrate. Most of it's actually pretty easy, but for this one specific section, you're going to have to collect flags on an obstacle board. There's one thing and one thing only that makes this so eye-gougingly hard, and it is the time limit. Seriously, the time limit is so strict that for a while, many players thought this mission was entirely impossible playing solo. Yes, this mission is technically meant to be played co-op, but this is Assassin's Creed Unity we're talking about here getting one person to play through this is a big enough ask as it is actually getting a friend to play along with you is pretty much impossible the thing is it is possible to finish this course solo it's just i mean incredibly hard the assassin's creed games were never meant for tight precision platforming so having to make near perfect movements and actions to beat this thing under a time limit is an ordeal by itself but then it's this time limit which is way too short it basically requires you to follow a guide to explaining you how to control the character. And even then, it's not going to be easy. For something so pointless and seemingly simple as a basic obstacle course mission, this quest is just totally unfair. The rest of the tournament is pretty easy. It's just this part in the middle that is basically impossible that for some reason they decided they needed to have there. At number three is Sigmire of Katarina and Dark Souls. Of all the confusing and unexplained side quests in the Dark Souls series, the one for Sigmire, you know, the Onion Knight, is by far the hardest. Just completing it is easy, but if you want to get to the ending with the best possible outcome, it is so tricky. You first encounter this guy sitting outside Sen's fortress, and most players find him again in the Anor Londo castle, but that's when his trail seems to stop. This is when things get confusing. You have to find him at a few more random spots and places you've already been, rescue his daughter, who's been turned into a crystal golem for some reason, and finally resolve his story in Lost Isolith. If you want the best outcome where he proves himself and reunites with his daughter, you basically have to follow a guide. Uh, so how this works is that Sigmeyer will help you with this battle against these monsters called Chaos Eater. If you want things to work out, you have to finish this fight with him having over 50% health, which wouldn't be too too bad, but a lot is left to chance here. He can get surrounded pretty easily, and if he gets hit with a grab, it's basically over. Now, if you want to be clever and finish off all the Chaos Eaters first, <laughs> guess what? You can't. That will not work. It will not help you. It also fails the quest for you, and you just get a bad ending. Uh, so the actual safest way to do this is to kill all but one of these monsters, then trigger the encounter. Now, it's still a gamble, but you have a much better shot of actually finishing things. All told, this is an incredibly confusing and complicated quest where there are many points the whole thing can just fail. 
If you don't talk to him at these specific moments to get all his dialogue, then the quest is over and you failed. Oh yeah, and even if you get the best ending, the guy still dies. He just dies with his head held high instead of being a sad sack. NPC quests in Dark Souls games are pretty much universally confusing, but I feel like this one is just cruel. Oh, I, I, I'm not the only one who feels that also. So it's a pretty, it's a pretty common sentiment, let's say, amongst those who have attempted it at least, or in many other cases, completed it. At number two, unlocking the invincibility cheat in GoldenEye. Uh, and I mean, like, way back in the day, Nintendo 64 GoldenEye. Like, unlocking any cheats on GoldenEye 64 was tough. They could all be unlocked by completing a certain level at a certain difficulty and under a certain time. Uh, a lot of them aren't too difficult, but they didn't get you very good cheats either. Like, unlocking paintball mode isn't too hard, but if you want to get invincibility, you're going to have to perform probably the most difficult challenge in the entire game. That is finished finishing level two facility on the hardest difficulty in just two minutes and five seconds. This one is infamous for a reason. The time limit is incredibly strict. Making matters worse, one of the objectives where you have to talk to this dude named Dr. Doak is partially randomized. So if he's not in the right spot, you'll never be able to finish the mission on time. On top of that, during the last sequence, many times your ally will wander too close to the tanks, which you have to destroy. And if he's not in the right spot at the second you come into the room, it's going to take too long mission failed. So it's not just that you have to play through the mission as quickly and as fast as you can, but you also have to deal with random chance, which basically means that a lot of the time you're going to lose no matter how good you are at this game, because it's entirely up to the game whether or not you get proper NPC placement and can finish in the time limit. What's funny about all this is that now it's entirely pointless. At release, we didn't know, but the game has codes you can input to unlock everything, so there is absolutely absolutely no reason to do this anymore. At the time of release, nobody had any idea that was an option either. Back then, if you wanted to play with invincibility on, you really had to do this nearly impossible feat. So basically, it's really hard, totally random, and utterly and completely pointless. Which brings us to the final one, the big one, number one, the Queen of Cards from Final Fantasy VIII. And oof, Final Fantasy VIII is a great game, don't get me wrong, but it is home to some really pointless crap. And this has got to be one of the most all-time baffling side quests in video game history. There are so many ways that it is near impossible that it is almost hard to count. So Final Fantasy VIII had this mini game called Triple Triad. It's a card game you play with random people you meet, and it's actually pretty fun. It's also really handy if you wanted to completely break the game's difficulty, but that is not really what's important here. What is important is that this side quest is just unbelievably painful. How it works is that this unique NPC called, well, the Queen of Cards, wants certain unique cards so her dad can make more. Sounds simple enough, right? So you just find certain cards and then give them to her, right? <laughs> no, of course not. What are you, are you crazy? You don't just simply give her the card she requested. No, that would be way too simple. You have to lose the card in a game of triple triad so to give her whatever card she wants you have to intentionally lose a game but of course there is also more she'll randomly select a few different rules regarding how she'll trade cards so sometimes she'll only take one card and others she'll take random meaning she'll take half the cards if you lose better be ready to save and reload a lot if you don't want to lose most of your best cards to add to the annoyance regardless of if you win or lose she'll just randomly move to a new city and I mean randomly like if she's in Dilling City there's 12.5% chance she'll go to Balam and 12.5% chance she'll go to Dolan and it just goes on and on like that and of course if you successfully give her the cards she wants you don't just get the cards now that would be too easy instead you can find them on totally random people all over the world no there is also basically no clues as to where these cards actually are and even after that we've barely even mentioned the baffling card rule system where the queen of cards will permanently change the rules of triple triad in whatever region she is in this whole system can basically ruin triple triad if you're not careful and it's needlessly complicated on top of being uh i guess just the most annoying thing ever that pretty much sums up this side quest. There are ways to make it less painful, but it's going to hurt no matter what. 
And that's all for today. Which was your worst of these seven? Is there another that you think easily topples them? Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. The best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to click the notification bell. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.